he claims that, and I find this persuasive, that the earliest organizations of humanity were based on fear and power, and were relatively chaotic, and we see it today with street gangs and mafias and tribal militias. They are highly reactive to their environment. They don't plan for the future. But if you cut off their head within three weeks, they reorganize and are back in business. So they naturally arise in areas of chaos. Those are the very first organizational structures you get in times of you know, war and post-war. Um, but then you zoom up out of that because people hate that. They are in fear all the time. And you do have command authority in some division of labor, but you don't have much else. Then you get into amber organizations. They're still contained. Humanity contains itself. So you know, you've still got fear. We'll always have that. But you've also got hierarchy, stability, control. It's the uh, you're born a serf, you'll die a serf. You're born a blacksmith, son, you become a blacksmith. It's caste systems. It's rigid, but it's relatively peaceful. And you can build irrigation systems and pyramids in the Catholic Church, right? You get processes, you get formal roles, you take a long term perspective. Um, so that's. Ken Wilber, thank you. Ken Wilber, thank you. Thank you. Ken Wilber. So Ken Wilber's integral theory applied to organizational development by Frederick Wilber. So then, okay, so Amber obviously has its issues. So we go up to Orange with competition and profit, innovation, and meritocracy. And so if you're born a blacksmith's son, but you make a great systems analyst, we can make you a systems analyst in an Orange organization, but you're not stuck. And that's really cool. And so you can make large corporations and public universities. Um, and they're really all about profit. And the problem with orange organizations is you end up with something like Coca-Cola saying they would like to make Coke more popular than water, which when you step back and think about it, is just gross. You know, growth for the sake of growth is what cancer does. And so people who don't like that eventually graduate out of orange to green, which is your Ben and Jerry's, it's your shared values, it's culture over strategy, uh, you know, we're not trying to grow for growth's sake, we're trying to grow for a purpose. So you get mission-driven organizations. One of the limitations of green uh, is an overstressing of uh, consensus, and that's where the teal organizations come in. Uh, in Bert's work, if you want to see an amazing example of a decentralized organization with autonomous teams, Bert's org, Patagonia, Morningstar, uh, a few others. There's a list in Lulu's book. And when I say decentralized autonomous, your ears should perk up. And you should be thinking, oh my god, I could run a worldwide one of those on a blockchain. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. And that's amazing.